Sweet. So everybody jumping in. Welcome, welcome. Thank you guys for joining. Um, I'll have you here. Let me still people coming in. So I'll have you guys uh, mute your mics uh, for the first bit of it. And then uh, we'll open it to Q&A after. Um, yeah, we got uh, Yon and Joe here. Joe is going to be helping us on the admin side. And then Yon is our guest for today, who's going to tell us all about crazy growth stuff um, <laughs> and his experience uh, in the, I mean, he's you've been doing this 10 plus years, right? Like early stage company. Like, yeah, yeah it's, it's, I mean, he's an OG in all of this and has seen <laughs> so much stuff come and go. And so he's going to be able to share a ton on that. So sweet, sweet. I think that's everybody in. Uh, so we'll begin. Yeah. So housekeeping stuff again, um, how we're going to structure this. Uh, we're going to uh, basically just have Yon share background and uh, some of the stuff that he's uh, done and just the really what he's seen over the last kind of 10 years career wise uh, on the growth side. Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, his background, uh, he was uh, head of growth at Deliveroo, which went to a Billy, <laughs> head of growth at Depop, which also went to a Billy. Uh, and he's now working at Nude as their CMO. Um, Nude is a finance app, and you can talk about this more specifically what they're yeah. doing. But it basically uh, helps millennials buy homes, is what I'm what I understand. They they help you get like a government yeah. uh, like uh, like credit from the UK uh, government. So, but yeah, man. To begin with, I, I'd love to get a little yeah. background um, and, and just like you know, t talk to people. We have a lot of people that are trying to figure out like how to do growth for the first time. Like they have some type of product they're trying to figure out how to make the, kind of their first dollar yeah. online. How did you get into this and like what you know what where, what was your path uh to here yeah, yeah, yeah no thank you for the invite first of all uh it feels like we're seeing each other way too often for the, the <laughs> <laughs> i'm happy about it you might be upset it's just like oh, I'm, a, I'm an energy vampire so <laughs> it's, it's great no no it's great it's great i i i feel i feel the energy boost the the, the other way around so no that's good um so I, uh, I'm in France right now, but I work in the UK. Um, I've been there all my career, never worked in France. Um, originally studied engineering. I did like a carry switch at 25. It was not for me, the, the kind of, uh, no engineering in the software development kind of thing, like old engineer, like project manager in old industry. Like I was managing engineers to like in automotive and stuff. So like trying to launch, actually working for Ford, but in the UK. So American company trying to launch the different type of like cars around the world and stuff. Um, but I uh, discovered Facebook ads in 2013. Oh my God. It was 2014, <laughs> 2013. When, oh, sorry. When uh, the ads manager was called uh, Power Editor. I don't know if you remember that name. Oh, I remember, uh, man. I remember, <laughs> I remember <laughs> one cent clicks. <laughs> With, like <laughs> paybacks of like, I would spend, I, I it's been like two bucks and you could make 25 like drop shipping. It was the most ridiculous thing ever. Exactly. I mean, and, yeah, you also get like free traffic from Facebook pages, but you, I mean, you'll probably talk yeah, about it. It's yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. So it was, it, it was right at the, uh, the beginning of, uh, you know, Facebook group, Facebook pages. Uh, we were, um, so I, I moved into an agency, started fresh as an account, um, account manager for different clients in, for this Facebook marketing agency that was one of the few in Europe um ba based out of uh, london and the beauty of that is it's not really the case anymore but <laughs> you would get clients straight from facebook they would like feed you client because they couldn't they didn't have anything oh, really? they, they, they didn't have the capability to like uh run their campaigns for the advertisers so they needed like a in-between agency to run it so it was like the best i, I wish i was a bit uh, older or a bit more savvy at the time to like figure that one out and start my own agency at the time yeah, like yeah. 10 years ago because <laughs> it was like literally nothing to do on the sales side you would just get the leads but what That's that insane. did to me is uh, I discovered Facebook ads there was a lot of campaigns at the time that was still uh, pay for followers and it's interesting because like right now <laughs> I'm, I'm also interested in paying for followers in the, those kind of campaigns on Twitter right now. I think I asked you about this and I was yeah, like, yeah, totally. Cause it's not available in the UK, right? Yeah. It's not available. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. I can see all these guys or like literally the ad is like hit this button and the button is just full and they're getting like crazy yeah. amount of And, like, and the reason yeah, behind this is like, you're requiring the followers just, just to create context, like requiring the followers because you can get organic reach over the long term. So it's like, okay, I'm going to pay a yeah. dollar now, but that's going to turn into, you know, whatever, $30 exactly. that I would spend later so 
Exactly. But I spoke to one guy, which I saw the ad, and that ad had like 10 million impressions. Like, you know, it was like one of the, it looked like a tweet from Elon Musk. It was like the, the engagement was crazy. And he was like, I'm paying 0.001 per followers. And I'm like, well, okay, <laughs> like, there's no brainer because for sure you can monetize that traffic way better than, totally. you know, you can make money on top of that. So that was kind of what that was at the time. But we had like, um, in 2014, we had like different clients. I was doing some gaming. Gaming was always advanced. So a lot of like app install type thing. There was a lot of games on like in Facebook, like Farmville. I don't know if you remember like those kind of like yeah, farming yeah, yeah. kind of games directly on Facebook. Um, and were you working yeah. with those types of companies that were doing like on platform games and then doing like Facebook yeah, user both. acquisition yeah. for them? Okay. Yeah, both. Yeah, yeah. So I, I learned to do Facebook ads for different vertical and they look very differently from like one to another but like the gaming ones you would, you would upload csv5 with like hundreds of lines and each line was an ad and they would upload all these ads like every almost every other day because they were doing like so like heavy um creative testing and audience testing there was the uh, you could tap into the social graph at the time like the, the graph was available yeah you know, it was like, just all, like you know <laughs> it was public so you know that all like cambridge analytica thing you know yeah, like, you could do a lot of, if you were a bit uh, yeah, could, could you go a little deeper yeah. on that and just to educate people of like what what was possible then you could basically like ping a user and then see everybody that was associated with them from my understanding yes. and then pull yeah. all the data of all those people associated and exactly. basically just like data mine facebook is, is you could data mine facebook create your own graph of the back of it and that's how to this day um you know um governments and political parties uh use that data to not to try and convert the other side, I wouldn't vote for you, but just to convince the undecided. I think that was the strategy. They could see who was left, who was right, and they could see who was in the middle. And they, you would just have to convince one or two extra percent of the ones who never vote to vote for you and you would you would win. There was like this, this all like um, strategy behind like what happened in the last 10 years and like the political thing. But anyway, for me, it was a game for other reasons because I could see you could like disrupt businesses. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna stick to the business. <laughs> and um, but I only did um, I only did a year and a half at that agency. Um, basically, was because of my kind of data engineering background was very into the tracking side of things. So I got really into like the pixels and um, integrating with mobile measurement partners like for mobile apps you've got three basically you've got adjust apps flyer and branch those are the three main ones there's not you know and mo most apps will use one of these to do measurements and, and tracking of unique links and things like that so i got really geeky about that so i became the go-to guy the agency to like set up every client so I got a lot, of, a lot of exposure that way. And also it got me. Yeah, it's room. just at bats at that point too. I mean, I, I always think about like, so I worked at an agency early on and it was one of the best things that ever happened to me just because the amount of data that you get to see, like you get, yeah. you, you like the, the turns on learning that you happen, you're not spending your own money. You're spending other people's money to collect data, see the data, understand the business. And then you just yeah. basically get smarter on the business side of it from a marketer yeah. standpoint. Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, I, I, that got me into the right rooms uh, at the right time because I was the only guy who understood that and was doing it for every client, for every vertical. And one of these meetings was with this uh, company that was up and coming in the UK, but got a lot of like you could they, they had like the best backers at the time, and it was the the YOLO years, you know, like you would get funding right, left, and center. If you had like a good concept, they would just fund you until you, you know. Yeah, if you had you, a mobile app that did anything, it was just like, cash yeah, was flying. It, <laughs> exactly, and it was the time of, it was just right uh, at the same time of uh, the, the Uber kind of era that was happening in the US. Very quickly, Uber Eats um, happened. And they, try, they also tried to launch Uber Eats in the UK. And we were basically the fight at the time. So that company was Deliveroo, by the way. I went into the room to try and pitch the agency. The next day on my LinkedIn, I got a message saying, we don't want the agency, we just want you to join. And I was like, maybe that's the, uh, that's the time for me to get more exposure. I need to go client side and really run the show in that, in, in that company. And I was the only guy, I think it's, to, it's the same, like you can do the parallel today. If you can find the, the channel or the arbitrage where you're the, the go-to guy in the company, um, to to be asked for something you're going to get a lot of leverage 
Uh, and if that thing is responsible for growing the company, even better, like you'll be in a room with the CEO, like straight away and they will ask you totally. questions and, and literally will sit down with these like growth metrics and be like, can we hit that number? Can we hit that number until you say no, basically. And it's like, you get, you get so much power. Yeah. Um, it's a way to get so in the room with all the decision makers. And I think that that's the thing that people like, especially young people that are getting started in growth and understand like the understanding the data and, and like being able to analyze the data and then translate it into a story for people yeah. is this powerful, powerful thing. So anyway, exactly. Just a, yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And, and if you, if you're the, the, the guy that can also then push the buttons to make it happen and understand the, you know, you've got the creative elements of the ad and all that stuff. Like it, it, it makes you like, uh, it's like having a superpower in a, in a startup. Um, and also time, every company wants this. Like I, I, yeah, I, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. if they hit 10 employees, they are looking for this person and they will pay you like so much money to come in and basically understand. Cause a lot of the times when they get to that scale, they're basically at a place where they have a massive data set. They don't know what any of it means. They're getting word of mouth growth, but they have no idea how to make it like actionable. So if you can yeah. come in and tell them, Hey, this is working. Here's the data that yeah. supports that. Let's invest yeah. more there suddenly you yeah. become again this like incredible like super like very yeah, powerful yeah, yeah. like leveraged individual within the organization so exactly and and it was the the early days of using geolocalization with smartphones and like i said the uber era so the, the concept in the uk was quite innovative it was the first one of the first few or actually maybe the the, the first one that was connecting good quality restaurants with uh, two people and with riders so it was one of the first few uh, three three sided marketplace, as we call it. So you, you you had Uber in the US, Uber Eats. You had um, the similar for the food, like I can't remember the the the, the ones in. Uh, now you've got grocery delivery, like uh, Gorillas and Orgetti and like these guys, Go Puff in the US. Um, but yeah, it was very early days of that. We don't we're not doing groceries. It was just restaurants, and and I came in to run uh, all the, the, the paid side of things uh, on the social side, so Facebook ads, Instagram, and then, you know, well, actually that was like, for this for my two year stint, that was enough. And literally unlimited cash, and we had, um, we needed to- How much were you spending a day, like at the peak of it, when you were doing just like all the Facebook ads, everything? It was, uh, how much is it a month? Uh, it was almost a, a million a month. So I don't know what's a day, it's a lot a day. Like yeah, 30, yeah, it's like three hundred, it's thirty three thousand a day. Yeah, yeah, like right around there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so pretty good. And before that, the agency, I, I knew that million mark was quite a lot because we, one of the the clients we uh, managed at the agency was Spotify, and Spotify on user acquisition was doing a million a month, and I was like, it always struck me as being like a shit ton of money, and I was like, man, they're just throwing a million a million dollars a month into facebook to to get users also also because, just like how facebook became facebook like i don't, I don't think yeah, people realize this, this that is right? it. yeah they had all it, these yeah. companies but also all those companies were getting that payback to happen right so it's like yeah, yeah they're yeah, spending yeah. a million a month but that would turn into whatever like 10 million in customer lifetime value so to them it's like this is a good investment and that's just something that's to it. you know scale down win, when win. you're thinking about growing your early stage stuff but this win-win definitely win-win yeah. and then from from that on uh that was the beginning for me like that company got very successful we were opening cities to cities um i was managing the supply and the, the demand side of things similarly to if you if you guys know andrew chen from um uh you know andrew senovitz um you know the a16z um fund he talks about uh, how he worked on uh, rider acquisition, how to get uh, riders for Uber, right? Not, not necessarily the... Um... Can you still hear me? Yeah, 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 you're good. You're back. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was similar to me, like one of the things that, that shocked me the most at Deliveroo is that it's not the way we were acquiring people for food, it's the way we're acquiring uh, drivers or uh, riders in our case, they were using uh, bicycles. We didn't need oh, cars. You just needed bicycles to deliver the food. And um, one of the things that uh, I remember very vividly is we were in a room with the, the CEO at the time, just uh, past Series B, and we're like, we need to scale really fast, but we have a problem in getting uh, the food to people. Too many people are trying to, uh, you know, we, we're eating like saturation in in um, in being able, being able to, um, to uh, sustain the, 
the demand. And I literally left that meeting with like three or four of us, like all the, the, the top people in the company. And I didn't ask anyone. That's one of the other things that I think is great with startup is you don't really ask for permission. You just ask, you just say sorry. You just you do know, the thing. To, yeah, you just 100%. do the thing. So went back to my desk, opened Facebook, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do ads for writers. And I, I, I was like, give me a, like, give me a, fo we had photographs of all writers right now with like the jackets and the bag delivering the food. I was like, let me try three of those. And literally the copy, I, I thought about it for two seconds. I was like, if you've got a bike, you've got a job. And like, that was the, that was the ad. Which is like, just to, for context, everybody, like that is the most, it's one of the most iconic ads that's been ran in like the last 10 years, in my opinion. Like, anyway, so, it's just crazy, man. <laughs> it's, it's so simple. And in my head, I was like, everybody has a bike. If you, if you want some money, like you're going to, you're going to click that button. And then the landing page was just a, a, a you know, two field, like kind of a lead generation, like, you know, lead gen page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were, we were paying like a pound or less per, um, per lead. So then I remember really, because from that meeting to the next week, the office was suddenly was filled with people with their CV, like coming to the office. And like being like that, I, I saw the ad. I want a job, and like completely, it, it completely turned the uh, the problem. We had too many riders. So you and built like you a, built like inbound foot traffic of people trying to get paid, like coming in and just not like knocking down the door. It, insane, exactly, insane. exactly, exactly. And it's funny because every time I hear about uh, on the chain and Uber in the US, like he talks about finding riders as being his main thing, and I always make the parallel because. It was a bit of the same thing for 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 me when it comes to the yeah, acquisition for for for, for delivery. Uh, totally delivery. Yeah. So talk, okay, talk, anyway. talk to me about Depop. I know, and I, I, just to kind of change the pace because I know, like, fast forward, and was it the same yeah. type of acquisition that you were doing um, with, uh, yeah. like, yeah, same type of like like paid strat, like paid acquisition, or it was yeah, I was I was head of digital, so. He, he, it was uh, also including like content and like and distribution. I was not just doing the ad, I was doing distribution or like whatever piece of content that we have online. Uh, and we, um, we launched in the US, we launched in Australia. So it's trying to crack the US through paid acquisition as well. But the, the, the main thing, uh, 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 so both of them were apps. So I've always been kind of in the app ecosystem for some reason, it's kind of random. I never like really thought about it um yeah you just ended up there with a deep expertise it was kind of just like you got yeah, drawn there and almost just followed exactly like gravity or whatever exactly yeah. but a lot of the lot of the things that you do when you do growth is uh it's kind of you know you you can transfer very easily into whatever you you put your mind to it like any business model is this uh when do you think you hit that tipping point of like where you just like I, I agree with you with like as soon as you there's like this magic moment that happens where it's like you start mm -hmm. to look at all businesses and you're like oh you could pull these levers and the company's going to grow yeah um yeah when, when did that happen was it at the agency that you got that to that that kind of like critical mass or was it at delivery was it at depop or when when did you start to feel like oh i can market anything it was at Deliveroo, I think. Yeah, it was quite early on. Not the, uh, maybe not at the agency because I was still figuring out. To be honest, it was like uh, it was mad. But afterwards, like at Deliveroo, I really found that it was really like uh, having a superpower. And then, so what happened at Depop? And it's kind of always the same thing. It's like you're trying to find the the arbitrage with a channel where you can get enough traffic at the right price so it doesn't break your business right so when you you make you make money as fast as possible on top of what you spend and i think i got really good at that um in in in, in the the companies i work for so for depop funny enough it was snapchat and it was always like uh, no it, it was it was it was like the least obvious. But for some reason at that time it was 2018, 2018, no one in marketing was talking about Snapchat. Snapchat was like trying to like trying so hard to get advertisers on their platform. I think they still are trying. But um I, I realized very quickly we could get like three times the traffic for the same budget. And it was converting as well because most of you know, for Depop, we were looking for like Gen Z, like young people with like you know, an, an affinity for clothing and, you know, wanting to like resell or um, buy secondhand. Totally. And that was somebody, somebody um, that wanted like a side hustle or whatever, and this is an easy yeah, way for yeah, them to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. 
Exactly, and uh, uh, so the the for for us like the, the 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 most qualified cheapest traffic was on Snapchat, and literally we went from. I joined the company. I, it's, it was a funny story as well. Like I, I went for the the interview with the CEO. She told me we've been trying to look for this role for, for, for to find someone for this role for more, over a year. I don't believe digital can work because we've been organic since, like you know. But what they call organic is you know, they've, they've done a lot, but they don't don't want to admit they've done marketing. And they, and she was like, so. It's gonna be challenging, but you know, if you if you think you're the right person, you know, you can you can take the job. And in my head, I was like, they've been they were running for like four years. They already had three million organic users, like pretty much organic, like no minimum digital spend. Like they never cracked paid ads or acquisition, etc. In my head, I was like, this is like, it's gonna be easy, easy because <laughs> because the product is good. Like at the same time, like we're always trying to find is like you can't you can't um, Polish it up, you know. Like if it's no, if the product 100%. is good, you know you can you can add your 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 magic on top. So I, I just we want to point out a thread, yeah. just real quick. I want to point out a thread uh, between these two. Like so, at Deliveroo, the arbitrage was Facebook because it was early, and then at Depop, yeah. the arbitrage was <laughs> Snapchat because it was early. So like mm-hmm. what what Yon is talking about here is like basically you're finding these channels that like currently at that moment, whenever you're launching that application or whatever the product is, that you're getting that cheapest traffic, getting that cheapest acquisition. So like what worked previously will not work now. So you're always trying to be on the forefront and finding, okay, where is that that new frontier? Because yeah. traditionally, like what we've seen, I think both over our careers is like, as these new channels get popularity, they give you these, uh, they give you inventory, add inventory at a way cheaper cost than they did, yeah. like than they would previously, because they're trying to incentivize you to get onto the platform. Um, so yeah. if you can find that arbitrage and identify it and also link it with the product. So you have like channel, we call channel product fit or sorry, channel yeah. market fit, or uh, I'm getting my terms wrong. <laughs> but the idea is that that a, a specific product is good for a specific channel. You're trying to identify yeah. that and then basically dump in all of your cash that you have for, for growth to, exactly. to that channel. So yeah, that's exactly that. We, and so just to, to, to finish on that, we went from zero to uh, half a million pounds per month budget in six months. Crazy. That's the That's how fast... <laughs> I, I started to deploy that cash. Six months time went from zero to five, to five hundred uh, k. So and that's that, those were again like crazy desk meeting with the the CEO and the founder, and they, they would just like pull me from my desk. They were like, uh, "Yuan, you know what you just tried on Snapchat? You just uh, you just showed us the numbers, but like you know, how, how far can this go?" And I was like, "Well, how far do you want to go?" And like, <laughs> and like <laughs> they were like ridiculous ridiculous uh discussions basically you know? asking like, can you spend more money for us <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah because then on the other side what was happening is they were going to the investors and they were like we need more cash like let's let's get <laughs> so that's how that's how that's how i think that's the the main reason uh that made the series c happen for deep up uh and i and i basically that 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 summarized like the my two years there and then you know nine months after i left they they sold to etsy for like 1.2 billion so that's the, that's that was the that was the the thing like just we did other things Do you think all that value and, uh, was added in that last couple of years like right before they yeah, sold yeah. etsy yeah. yeah 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 because when you um basically you need what if at eye level you need someone like me to drive the hyper growth like you don't really have it yet you're growing but it's not going fast enough yeah, it's always then you're starting to grow really fast. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah then yeah. you're starting to grow really really fast and then when i left what they did is they cut everything you cut everything you get the best metrics possible for the investors and then you sell yeah. that's what they did you know they polished the whatever the the you know what was not um um, the most efficient. We maybe. did that at a previous <laughs> company I was at. Every time we would raise, we basically cut ad spend by eighty percent. So we go yeah. like for a couple months, we go positive. And basically, how you communicate that to to your investor, like while we did ended up doing it, was like, hey, at any mm-hmm. point we can become profitable, and you're trying to signal that. And then what that does is you get this like 
map like way bigger valuation because suddenly the business like the p l looks way better right so it's kind yeah, of this yeah, yeah. it's funny this year yeah, that yeah, trip being true. used for for an exit like deep off. <laughs> yeah it's crazy because it's yeah it feels like you know you're thinking about etsy and like those like big companies they're like no that's that that shouldn't be that simple but yeah it is it is yeah, yeah. but it's all totally. but it's all it's all it's all wrapped around like all that political egotistic bullshit of like our uh, you know, I remember like they hired like a senior VP of growth from like Skyscanner and, and shit like that. You know, like that person who like these people do like nothing, no marketing. No, you know, 100%. they come in, they just is they're just a face. They're not on the like, pit. Like they're, they, they haven't touched it. They haven't touched an ads manager dashboard in probably five years. Like, I feel, well, or never. I feel like never. Like they feel yeah. like they never. They, they never even launched a Facebook ad ever in their life. You know, no. because there might be like the slightly older generation. Honestly, probably like, anybody that's touched the Facebook ads ad manager is a better marketer than them like they conceptually only know theory they have no application like they're just talking exactly. bullshit so exactly exactly anyway so all right yeah, so, so now was, uh, so yeah. now nude uh and talk uh so now nude and you're doing this podcast thing and i know you're you're working uh you're about to launch uh, your own project with your brother it sounds like you're building something oh, uh, and then we'll, we'll yeah. do that and then we'll open it up for uh q a so people can just pick your brain on stuff yeah, and yeah, yeah. talk about yeah. arbitrage so Let's do that. Let's do that. So uh, fast forward to 2021, 2022. Over the last two years, I worked in uh, working in fintech. Um, it's a part of one of the best sector in the UK. Like you know, there's like a ton of startup coming out of the UK in uh, in that in that field. But the the thing that was really cool about uh, New is they had this like lifestyle feel of uh, fintech. It's not like product or uh, oriented or like very like money oriented. It's really about the goal and trying to get you a house. You know, so there's like some nice emotional things about marketing that you can tap into. Um, but the thing that we did that worked um, really well. Uh, up to now is um, well, you guessed it, it's TikTok. You know, the last few years TikTok has been like the the thing. So, like, if you follow uh, the logic of where well, Facebook, from, like Facebook, Snapchat, Snapchat TikTok, TikTok, all of them are trying to get ads going, and your yeah, is there yeah. <laughs> pitching some exactly. app to somebody. <laughs> the, the 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 funny the funny thing about uh, fintech is. Uh, I don't know how it is in the, in the, in the US, but in the UK, you look at like ninety percent before I joined fintech, ninety percent of ads there was like someone holding a card in in the sky or whatever, and it's like the most boring ad ever, you know, like trying to get someone to to get their debit card. It's like very very um, uh, basic type of uh, uh, acquisition. So when when I when I joined, I went full on uh, creator influencer. Uh, type of activity um, managed to find I was like you know what I need I need to find 19 20 year old like uh, creator that could do a video every day on TikTok forever you know so oh. I so you were I, brokering I would, them like to yeah. do UGC content for nude is that is that just a, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. okay and, and 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 the how were you finding was, them? Were you just like DMing them on TikTok? Like, yo, <laughs> like yeah, let no, us pay was, you? Yeah, or... yeah, so I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was scrolling on TikTok, looking for the right keywords in our niche or the, the like the, the the niche around surrounding what we were doing. So it could have been uh, personal finance, but it could also have been like interior design, like so, like they just bought a house and they're dec decorating it, whatever. Like this, like adjacent kind of topics. And as soon as I was, I maintained the list of like ones that were not too big enough because I knew that would be charging too much. Um, so like maybe like maximum 10,000 followers, max, you know, like so 10,000 and below, but they had like the knack for the for the creation. They, they, they were doing good videos. The engagement was good. You could see that there was like some some good um, some good stuff there. Maintain the list. All of them as they they have their Instagram account connected. You click on Instagram, you go on the DMs, you DM them on Instagram. Say, hey, I've seen your content on TikTok. I'm working for this brand. Um, would you be interested in doing like you know thirty videos a day, forever, and I'll pay you like a thousand bucks, you know? Right. And like for 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 a twenty year old who's probably studying and never even thought that they could get a brand deal, now suddenly they're like. Oh, maybe I can do. And I said to them, like, I don't care if you make the video every day or if you do a day where you shoot thirty videos. I don't give a shit. You know, you can. Yeah, yeah. You can. So they're doing a video a day. You're paying them a thousand pounds, and they basically like you got to publish a video a day, and that's how we're gonna pay yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. And you also manage the account, etc. I know, and like I found, and I found these two, uh, these two girls, like two, uh, say girls because they were really young, like nineteen year old. Um, 
and they they did it and we did it for like six months we stopped now but uh that was like that that's what kicked off like content and distribution of that content for nude suddenly we had a video every day of someone talking about our product or talking about things about buying your first home every day and then what i did i went to like a two like a repurpose.io and i plugged uh instagram reels i plugged youtube short i plugged everything i could plug i plugged and literally that video was going everywhere every day and in comparison and you turn those into ads you take the user generated yeah. content so just to talk through that yeah. for everybody so basically doing the influencer reach out you create some type of brand deal with them uh paying them a thousand pounds a month they post 30 a day you look at the data of okay here's the most viral videos that you did in the last 30 days you take those yeah. most viral videos turn those into ads natively on the platform you're, you're yeah. capitalizing on the arbitrage that's existing in TikTok ads the cheapest price that's happening there and you're basically you already know the ad is going to go like get you cheaper cpcs because it went viral on the platform organically first so just to exactly. reiterate that process exactly by doing 30 videos a month or one a day you you you're getting so many um uh attempt to get some variety with videos like you're always going to get two three four that are going to that are going to go going to get more views than the rest you use those ones for your for your spark ads basically um and then eventually we i i saw there was this trend where um, people where they say still trending like you 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 just go on the street and you ask random people random questions yeah man your, on the street or woman on the street uh, content it's yeah. yeah so then so then i said to them look how much do you want to be paid to go for a day shoot like 30 interviews in one day that will give us content for like you know the next three months because then we're going to yeah. chop it edit it whatever and they they were like oh we know for an extra 500 whatever i was like fucking hell great do it <laughs> and then, so 1500 pounds and we got two people on the street for a day shooting and editing yeah. and providing yeah. all that content to you and that's that's the arbitrage <laughs> yeah and and the thing is oh you, you that would cost like it. 30k that would cost like 30k yeah. and yeah. also the content would be shit because it wouldn't be actually native for the platform or like exactly. have the virality built into it exactly. the people that understand what's going to go viral most yeah so uh, to give you an idea of the scale like when they were doing their video in their bedroom we were getting like tens of thousands of views like sometimes a hundred thousand when they started doing street interviews, we suddenly, we started to have like these random people saying some like random shit on camera. That was funny, whatever. They were dressed in certain ways, whatever. Whatever we was getting comments was the key. It's like, as soon as you get something where people comment, you start getting like way more, way more views. So uh, we started getting millions of views in some of these videos um, and then same strategy. You start putting some Spark ads on top of the, those videos and uh if you look at our account now it's called save with nude uh like i think our top video has got like 10 or 15 million views or something and that, those were our ads so what that translates into is i think for a typical fintech in the uk i think it's pretty similar if you do convert in dollars like a cost of uh, an install is usually around between three and five pounds um our cost of install was like 50p so when you when you when you get that kind of cost per install you're very competitive basically we could compete with our main competitor that had like 10 times the money we, we could get 10 times the results ended up having the same traction as them with 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 uh you know with like seed money basically yeah just, just so, to give people context of how many installs that is so say you spend a million pounds and you're paying three dollars for or three pound per install then you're only getting 33 or 333 thousand installs in contrast, Yon, what he just did, he's getting 2 million installs compared to 333,000. So like that's 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 what he's talking about from the competitiveness, like with these incumbents yeah. that have cash to spend, but are doing it in a very like inefficient or just like interesting, yeah. uninteresting this, way. So. The thing is for them, a three to five pounds cost per install is good. Like they're, they're happy to spend that. And they're like, because they're VC backed, like heavily VC backed or, you know, whatever. That's uh, that's fine for them. So when you come in as a new a challenger and you, you can get that kind of results, that's that's how you get in the game. That's how you that's how you enter the fight, basically. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, awesome, man. So I appreciate so, yeah. it. I, I feel like that gives like great context and background kind of to open this uh, Q&A up. Um, before we do that, 
uh, I'd love to ask you just like, like, you know, three arbitrages you're seeing currently uh, in the marketing space uh, that yeah. you're like, you know, the, the, I know you have a deep T like of understanding in paid acquisition and paid ads, anything in those areas that you're seeing right now that, that people can capitalize on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, three. Um, or I even say, yeah, one, one to three. <laughs> hey, no, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, no, I can, I can find, I can find a few. So, um, so you mentioned, I'm doing a lot of tests on uh, the podcast uh, we launched with uh, my mate Jay, which uh, you were you were a guest uh, a few weeks ago, uh, called "In Growth We Trust." Um, and one of the things that we discovered uh, recently is that uh, there is a this kind of a, it feels like almost like a glitch on LinkedIn at the moment where <laughs> you can basically get a, a cost per you know thousand impression for like. Um, 0 0.003 uh, cents um, on the on the right hand side text ad, and we were talking about this before before pressing record. Uh, the funny thing about this is like I'm, we're only running those to get the impression to be seen. We we don't want people to click on them because we don't, we don't we don't want to pay for that traffic. You only get charged by LinkedIn if someone clicks on that right hand side ad. So, so you're basically getting free impressions on LinkedIn yeah. from, from that ad. So just for, yeah. I, I know you messaged me, I think it was like three weeks ago and you're like, yo, we're seeing this. And we just got yeah. 150,000 impressions in a week on LinkedIn for free by running yeah. this ad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. The ad is just an image, two sentence. It shows up on what's the What's it called again? Side. It's like, it's the That's top. Not... I know what you're talking about. It's the top right one, but what's the ad creative name? Do you remember uh, off the top of your head? Or... It's, it's, I, it's we can find it in the post too. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, called, it's called text ad. Um, yeah. it's, it's just a text ad on on on, uh, on the sidebar. So I think it's, yeah, it only shows up on desktop. And uh, and because LinkedIn is huge, you can get an in, insane amount of uh, impression. I think over the last we post, so I, I was saying to you, like we, we posted it recently because we start to get too many clicks on it. And I was like, I don't want to spend all that money. I just want the impressions for free. So um, yeah, so yeah, I can see the question. Like, there's no, um, how do we how do we make people not click on it? I think you, you can't. Eventually, I think maybe the trick is to post the campaign, try a new campaign until, so LinkedIn takes, a, you know, maybe a week or two weeks until it For starts the to find the right people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, maybe yeah. you just, you, you post it, you duplicate it, do another one, and then you you maybe you do it that way. But the yeah, thing is- Yeah, because it throws it back into learning, which allows for you to continue to yeah. get those impressions during that learning phase. So hypothetically for like, you would do like two week chunks where it's like, okay, cool, I do. <laughs> Yeah, I do that yeah, campaign. Yeah. As soon as I get a click, I duplicate, and then I run the the same campaign, but to a new audience, so that it's it's forced exactly. back into learning, and then you could just ride that for indefinitely. And what's what's magic about LinkedIn is that the audience <laughs> is exactly the one you need. So for us, for the marketing yeah. podcast, there was marketers, head of growth, like what like whatever marketing. Yeah, because you can do title. job title targeting. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly the one the the people you need. So, um, but the thing is. Like if we if, if we had if we wanted to spend a little bit of money on those, I don't mind paying for the click. Like paying a pound to reach like two three hundred thousand people, I'm happy with that. Like it's it's, it's, it's fine. We just post there because you know it's our own money, and we we're like, well, we don't. There's no there's no need to like go too fast. But that's I think that's one that that one that one was uh, was pretty good. The um the other thing I wanted to mention because it's quite funny as well is um. I think it, it, it could apply to uh, to multiple things like um, mostly apps and, and podcasts. But uh, I think I tweeted about this um, two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. Um, I went to the app store and I literally went to every devices and I followed, played the podcast, followed the podcast and left a review on like 20 or 30 devices in like an hour. <laughs> Because I was in between, I was I was in between meetings in Oxford Circus in London. Wait, wait, wait. So, so you went into a physical Apple store. Was this in yeah, London? Yeah. And you went in and like on all the iPhones, you basically like followed the podcast, gave it a like a five star review, and then like wrote something yeah. on all. That's amazing. Exactly. And you, you know why? It's, you know you why go it's with crazy. your wife, or you're like, "Yo, babe, we're going to the we're going to the Apple store." <laughs> like, like you say, like babe, all my beer. 
<laughs> oh, that's amazing, man. It's like, that's amazing. It's, 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 I was like, what am I doing? At the same time I was doing it, I was like, I felt pretty smug, but at the same time, I'm like six foot four, like, like guy. I, like, you can't miss Yeah, me you're a shot, big dude you know, like, touching every I'm phone, a, doing something. I'm yeah. a big guy. And I, was like, and I was like, you know what? You should have filmed me. I was like looking behind. I was like pretending to be interested in like maybe buying it. And I was like, no, no, I'm just doing a podcast right now. <laughs> If somebody do this, please film it and post it to the Discord. I would love to see it. We'll do it, Joe. We'll do it for the prompt jockeys, uh, the prompt jockeys pod. I'll go into the Apple store here and I'll I'll, I'll have my girlfriend record it. That is hilarious, man. That is really funny. And you know what is great? So it's not so to explain why it's important and why it works. It's not just for uh, the vanity of the the followers. Like the followers on Apple Podcast is one of the main thing Apple takes to uh, rank you in uh, in any category of podcast that you are. Yeah. So, if, so the if, subscribers, yeah, the subscribers are a factor of that ranking algorithm yeah. internally. So and and the reviews. So what you get when you do that is you boost yourself in the ranking. So you get more organic uh, visibility into your podcast uh, in the days that follow. And because you're leaving the review, anyone who jumps into your podcast and see your podcast page will see that you've got enough reviews to trust it. It's a, it's a that you're building yeah. up. It's a social proof. Of, it's a social it's proof a social that we proof. do good yeah. stuff. So especially if you're starting from zero, like they come in and it's like, okay, cool. Like at least there's 10 plus it's, reviews that are five stars. Yeah, so. exactly. So it's, it's like, it's like how to go from zero, like zero to one on a podcast or even an app. Like if you have an app, any app, you could just, you could do the same thing. You can go totally. to any app store, download the app. Oh, interesting. Whatever. Yeah. It'll be the same. It'll be the same. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. um, it's not it's not scalable, but when you're starting from literally zero, but could it be? I mean, I'll put a bounty out for fifty bucks and say go into what well, like if you go into an app store and film yourself yeah. like doing all these, we'll, we'll Venmo you fifty. Like maybe I don't know. Yeah, if you if you if you film it on top and then when you put it on TikTok, you get viral on the TikTok. Exactly. You get up to the app and then you you get like thousands exactly. of pistols on the back of it. Exactly. Like you can literally, yeah, you can think you can, yeah, you can you can build on top of that easily <laughs> with the content and the virality. Uh, but yeah, those are those, those are the two like most um, most recent one that I'm I'm thinking of that are like a little bit more like new. They they feel like new. They feel like yeah. More, they feel new totally. Um, um yeah yeah awesome awesome all right yeah uh please guys let, unmute if you have questions um or maybe uh raise your hand in the chat and then we'll just kind of unmute you as as they come in um i can also just ask them so all right we have dan let me do go to dan and oh oh sweet oh sorry ask them mute okay cool so dan i think you can unmute and yeah, you should be able up, to ask. Can hear me? yeah yeah we can hear you nice. what's the advice for low ltv products so um, to give some context, I've got a, an application that automatically applies people to jobs, 39 bucks a month. It's a conversion monster. So it's like 20% on to the signup page, convert to a free trial, 50% convert to a paid account after that. Um, our problem is top of funnel and LTV is generally two to three months. So it's like a hundred mm. bucks. Uh, our best performing thing so far is we've just been posting tons of content on LinkedIn and TikTok especially LinkedIn, grabbing emails, like comment your email below and then remarketing with Colt. Um, I, I feel like it's back. a paid influencer strategy, I would guess. I, you know, and I'd love your thoughts, but like if you're getting traction on LinkedIn, I'd try to find like 20 somethings that are just about to graduate because they're going to have the old, they're going to have that network with the other people that are in their classes. It, it, what's your demo? What's the, what's the type of user? I guess what's the age and kind of what's the demographic? Uh, amazing demo. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, Yon, I, I'm curious your thoughts. I mean, you have way more uh, uh, experience on the um, the organic, like influencer social side. Which, what, where's your head at? Yeah, I mean, if you if your LTV is uh, like, if it, it feels, I don't understand why it's um, you've got it, why it's low if you're getting like a hundred um, bucks in, in three months. It feels like a healthy kind of. LTV to be able to build on top with like influencer and stuff. Is it because maybe, they like, don't explain. change jobs a lot? So it's like, it's almost like a one-time payment and then they bounce yeah, or, yeah. They, or they're at that yeah, job. Yeah. So maybe it's like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah relative yeah. to like B2B products, like that's a low LTV, but there's a, yeah, there's a healthy mm. amount of consumers out there and conversion is really yeah, 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 no, I think. I'd yeah, almost think about like a Tinder so, yeah. strategy where they got like embedded with um, sororities or, or, uh, <laughs> 
it, it, like something like that, where there's already a network that exists on a, on a campus um, where you have yeah. like a representative that's, that's associated with you. That's almost like, and then every, you know, every person that they get, they get a kickback. Right. So it turns into a job for them. Or you just say, you know, we're going to pay you a grand a month and mm. like, here's this quota and you can make more if you get more signups or something like that. I, I don't know. Yeah, that, that's yeah. Bumble, did. Bumble, Bumble blew up like that. Really? Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I, I think what I would, if I was in your shoes, it would be figuring out, okay, those influencers that are already doing this type of content. And then how do you basically get them to be more consistent and <laughs> promote yeah. the tool? Um, and then go for those individuals. Uh, so like, don't try to get somebody to do this, find somebody that's already doing this, or like trying to be a LinkedIn yeah. influencer or whatever, that's 20 and then double down on them. And then the, uh, it just it, tapping into those networks, that always the challenge with these when it's like one times payments is you're basically trying to tap into networks that already exist that don't know they have value for existing and then getting them to do mm. something at a cheaper cost than, you know, you could pay somebody that knows their real value. So uh, yeah. anyways, just yeah. brain dumping thoughts, but yeah, we did that on TikTok and it worked really well. Uh, you know, on the same strategy okay. that you guys did. Yeah. We're going to try. Nice. That. And then, uh, well, what I was going to say is that if you find something that works, like even for like bigger companies, like we talked about like Depop and stuff, um, you don't need to find like 10 channels. Like if you have one or two strategies that work really well, that you can ride that way for like two, three years easy. Like it, it doesn't have to, you don't have to diversify too quickly. If you have 100%. like one or two things that works, just, you know, double down on it. Why, why are you trying to find something, something else? The thing I wanted to add about LinkedIn is I think recently they, uh, they, uh, they went further into the influencer type space because uh, if you find someone to, talk about your product on LinkedIn, you can then uh, uh, boost that post. Oh, so I don't know if the brand else. can boost it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's a way to whitelist the same way you do on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. And that could, I haven't seen this being used yet, but that might be great for like particular uh, businesses. And like, if you get like a really great post that gets initial organic engagement, maybe like putting a, a bit of money behind it could uh could work yeah i've well. seen like one post do that we get like three posts a month that go viral with like thousands of comments that's amazing <laughs> I, I would tap in yeah i would tap into that network that that if that thing that's already happening it's like okay how do i layer then some paid ad spend over the top of it yeah. and this is kind of yeah. how i always think about organic social is like i'm just using that as a sandbox to find like where am i getting the most pull from the market as soon as you identify yeah. that, then you take, you know, whatever resources you have to deploy and you, you basically try to get that thing to happen even more because it's all, it's happening naturally in that, in that channel. But, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, if you, if you're getting posts with a thousand likes already on LinkedIn, definitely put some money behind it. Like that's going to, you know, it's like putting fuel to the fire. Yeah. yeah. Or, I mean, another random thing is just like <laughs> pay people to DM all their network. Um, you can have them yeah. use what's that? What's that tool you're using, Yon, uh, right now to do automated DMs? Is it Lemlist? The Lemlist, yeah, yeah. yeah Lemlist yeah. has free auto DMing for LinkedIn, so you could basically be like, "Oh, here's this influencer person that has a lot of connections with other college students," and pay them to auto DM about like, "Yo, I found this tool. I thought you might be interested," or something oh, like man, that. Yeah. I don't know. That would be that would but be I'm amazing. Thinking, like, imagine yeah. they have 500 people that they can auto DM for you. What would you pay for that? You know, I'll, I'll yeah, pay them a dollar yeah, a piece, yeah. or you know, whatever that is. <laughs> yeah, because those auto DM on LinkedIn, when you're DMing your own connections, you so like, uh, <laughs> I'm I'm get I'm getting. That's probably another tactic we could uh, we 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 we're, we're talking about right now. But I'm getting 40 to 50 percent replies on those messages. Uh, yeah, so yeah, just for just for context, he's auto DMing people about the podcast to basically like go like and subscribe to the podcast. He's sending them the podcast auto subscribe link. Um, yeah. and they are basically, you know, going like clicking yeah. down into that. So so you could do it for another product. And like you said, I, I love the your idea. You could you could send someone a one pager on like step by step how to do lem list, etc. You you pay the like a fixed amount, let's say like you know, five hundred bucks or whatever, but like they setting up the automation on their end using your instructions. And then they don't have to the thing is they don't have to do anything, it's auto automatic. So every day they could send it to send like 50 DMs. Every day you've got 50 pe people that potentially after I would them. Go, I would like, go university by university too. So yeah. I'd like try to identify yeah. the university and then like be like, okay, how do I get 10 people that are well connected in that university to all auto DM like every person mm -hmm. there? Um, because then that creates a word of mouth effect on that campus. 
So you're like focusing mm-hmm. in on that one and then you make a jump to like whichever one you're starting to see traction. I was about to do that on Instagram and just like do the uh, Nikita Beer strategy, which is like follow all, you know, kids at schools yeah, love and it. this and then like have mm-hmm. them follow back when we launch. But I think LinkedIn has more arbitrage than, than Instagram right now. That's what it feels like at least. Uh, for sure. I mean, especially yeah, with this yeah. Lemless uh, arbitrage or like this Lemless play because it's free, right? Like all they have to do is they sign up for Lemless and they turn this on and they make 500 yeah. bucks or whatever that, yeah. that that dollar number is that you guys can spend. Um, <laughs> that's, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, also, yeah. also, it's like you're... You're getting it from somebody you know so it's like it doesn't feel as weird like you know if i get a yeah. cold message from a linkedin that's from a random brand that feels way different than like jenny who's hot who's in my you know yeah. <laughs> like my stats class yeah. is sending me this thing that's like I, I here's how to get you a job you know on autopilot of course i'm gonna yeah, click yeah, that yeah, so yeah, yeah this yeah, feels like yeah, campus yeah. ambassadors 2.0 yeah yeah <laughs> yeah cool, thanks, that would be there i'm sure that of course would work, yeah. of course Boy. any other questions um you can raise your hand and we'll, we'll bring you up. Yeah, I actually got one, if you don't mind. Cool, Joe. Yeah, fire. So, Yon, would, so for a lot of the people like in the in the Prompt Jockeys Discord, they're solopreneurs. They're, they're running these experiments with money out of their pockets. So mm. how do you recommend they go about doing these things when they don't have a lot of money to blow? I think uh, a lot of the things we just talked about just now, like so that I can relate from the podcast point of view because I don't want to spend too much of my own money into it. So the things that we 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 were like we are doing with my co-host uh, Jake is like the lame list thing. I've got almost uh, 12,000 followers on LinkedIn. So I've got a long list of people to DM. Like it's still like it's probably going to run for the next six months because I don't want to, you know, we've got like a daily limit on LinkedIn. But like that's like that's free, right? Yeah. If I can find a tool that allows me to do that for free, I can do that until I exhaust my my network. And if 50% or 40% reply, that's like, you know, five, six K uh, potential listeners just off the back of uh, of that one tactic. The other thing that we're doing, I think that applies to, uh, that can apply to a lot of people. You can, you can enter a lot of Slack groups um, for free. Like you find them on the internet for like whatever your niche. Um, and the thing about Slack, most like they don't restrict this. I found one that were restricting this, but most like you can go um, to the people tab and then you can't set automation to someone else's Slack. I haven't seen that. I looked into it, but you could literally make an intro, um, cold intro message, copy paste it to everyone on that Slack. I, I, I calculated myself, like I, I, I timed myself. I could do a hundred in two minutes. <laughs> you know by going That's like sick. copy paste back copy paste back copy paste back like you know like uh, so just with those two things whatever your product whatever you're trying to kick start you'll find your first hundred customers that way you, like I, I i think it will be fairly easy you, you just you just need to like set the time to do it sure um, something i would say too is like learning is like doing a productized service like learning some type of skill set that you, like using like pairing this with what yon just described like say for example like we're going to do seo content for you or we're going to do some type of like like social for you or whatever that is yeah. you can get your first like basically payout or like your first you know it, you can cover your rent or whatever by doing that and pairing it with some type of thing that this business doesn't understand or doesn't, doesn't know how to do um yeah. and that's i mean yeah. for every i when people are starting out they're like how do i how do i get going like how do i just like make my first dollar online like i always emphasize yeah. that or find like you know do something on like like etsy as an example or like yeah, yeah, yeah. you're wanting something where it's very immediate but productized services offering some type of service is going to be the fastest way to get cash in your pocket so. exactly and uh the, the the thing you know obviously to talk about uh draft horse a little bit like the, the reason why I've always been kind of a bit f- further away um, in my career to SEO is because SEO has always been, you, you can always only invest or up to now, investing in SEO and content on the, on the web, you can only do it if you know you've got the cash flow to uh, wait until it gets fulfilled, right? That's always been the problem. It's like, you, you know, if you've got six months of cash in the bank for your company and you need to like grow really fast, if you have to wait for a year until you get traffic, it's probably a, it's probably going to be a problem. But nowadays with solution like, um, like draft horse, if you can, 
if you can start your blog or your traffic with 100, 200, 500 articles, literally in like uh, the space of a week or a few days, I don't know how fast it, I, I still need to uh, to to, uh, to use it, by the way. We, we're thinking about it for the podcast, but uh, we just need to implement that thing. But, and, and then start seeing some traffic literally from like, a weekend, two weeks in, like uh, I can see from like everyone's screenshots and like Cody screenshots on what you what 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 you guys been doing in the last few weeks. That for me solves the SEO play. Even if you don't have that much time, you can kickstart it. I mean, that is quickly. a service too, right? Like go to a business exactly. and be like, okay, hey, I'm gonna message, you know, every pet owner or pet grooming owner in all the US or in a, in a city. Offer that as yeah. a service. If you send a hundred, you're gonna get at least one like lead back, right? Like what whatever yeah. that is. So. Anyway, yeah, yeah. It looks like so uh, then, Ruben has his tando. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, 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 go for it. Go for it. Cool, cool. Um, sweet, Ruben. Yeah, if you want to go ahead. What's up, fellas? I uh, followed along for a bit. I've heard you talk about, remember that strategy of scraping by email, essentially, and then hitting them up about, hey, the podcast, these are the top, you know, three things we talked about in the podcast, and you're getting a 50% open rate. Something, it was something remarkable. Yeah, I mean, you can talk about this. You just did this last out. week. Go ahead. Oh, it was insane Sorry. when I heard that. I couldn't believe it. Um, so we run a, a car business, but it's all it's boring. It's We scrape data, essentially. So we're building out Twitter platforms. I put that post in chat the other day, surprisingly hit. We're building a newsletter just while we're negotiating deals. And I was wondering from your guys' perspective, I can see that how that would work for a podcast, but I'm curious if I do the same thing like we got no problem scraping. We can scrape any site. If I hit them up and do the same strategy about our newsletter, say these are the topics we covered. You're in cars. Maybe you'll, you know, you'll like this sort of a non-salesy sales pitch. Would that completely destroy the open rate that we get on the actual newsletter? You know what I mean? Like they would open maybe the email of me talking about the newsletter, but then once they either sign up, you know, would that be a quality enough yeah. So, so the arbitrage is that. Effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the 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 what we're seeing in like wh where this all came from is like we basically saw that <laughs> newsletters about the about a podcast episode, um, people are extremely receptive to them because they don't feel like it's marketing yet. So right. it's it, so that's kind of like I mean honestly, but you could do this right. So it's like I you're scraping all this data that's related to the car industry. <laughs> take all that, turn it into a 10 minute podcast about what's going on in the industry, use 11 labs to have like AI basically do all the audio and, and then like publish that as a podcast. You can then take that and do that same strategy. So it's, it's basically like what, what mm -hmm. exists right now is when somebody gets a cold email about a podcast, they don't feel like it's a cold email. They're like, Oh, here's something about my industry that I can learn from. So you're basically disguising content marketing <laughs> in, in like, you know, you're put, you're disguising it as a podcast, but in reality, right. it's really talking about your brand and introducing them to your brand. So like Yon just did this last week. I think you did it with 3000 and you uploaded them into beehive. They're all like heads of growth heads of marketing, you know, heads of or, or CMO types that he scraped uh, from. I, I, don't, I don't know where you got them from, but he then <laughs> sent them his podcast episode and the open rates on it were 50% and the CTRs were like 15%, right? right? It's even, so it's man. that, so if they're, how I would think about it is like, okay, you have these people that are in the car industry. Like we're just trying to create a piece of content that doesn't feel like marketing. Podcasts are that thing that right now that doesn't feel like marketing. And then what that does is that basically like gets them in affiliation with your brand. And then you can week over week, hit them with that, that information. So I, that man, yeah, I have to jump guys. I'm sorry. Be, uh, I just have a sales call right. in a minute. So, but anyways, <laughs> yeah, just. Do you need video for the podcast? No, you can do just audio only. Up audio. Oh, straight okay. up audio. Yeah. Because for our yeah. newsletter, we just curate what happened in cars the past week. So I could very easily you could just, just turn that into audio. Talking. For 10 yes. minutes of hey this happened this happened this happened okay got it that would rip that would rip Ruben. like i, I just i'm just I, I know that audience and what you're talking about like 100 yeah. percent that'll just absolutely kill so okay yeah, yeah i was curious all right i have to jump um i'll stop right. i'll or i'll I, I, can i give you joe um admin i don't know what, how this works but might be able to if people want to keep going but i i, I have to bounce as well Okay, it's, cool. Uh, six, so maybe we'll just call in for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we appreciate it, Yon. Thank you, man. Again, uh, learned a shit ton. 
Super valuable. Oh, um, this was recorded. Um, I will uh, get the video uh, locked in and shared within uh, the Discord. We'll probably chop it up as well um, and just like put it into sections. Um, and then I'll try to also uh, get the transcript or I'll get the transcript out and all of that. So I'll work with I'm Joe to get be, this done. I will so. be in an Apple store tomorrow, the latest ripping up. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. We love it. Nice. Thank you guys. We really Bye, appreciate guys. it. Thanks again, Joe. Nice to meet you. Bye. 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 Bye.